Young Two. We invite you to laugh along at Christmas with Les Dawson and Roy Castle. <laughs> My impression of one legged horse. Clop. <laughs> a merry, merry Christmas, a happy new year, peace on earth and goodwill to all men, festive felicitations, and all the rest of that seasonal hogwash. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the producer said just for once go out there and be cheerful, be happy, spread joy and gladness. I think that's what he said, because he'd been getting happy all day, he's had his head in a bucket. <laughs> Nobody knows what things were like in the past. When I was a kid, we were too poor to have a turkey, we used to have Peruvian woodcock. <laughs> it's a black pudding with a feather stuck in it. <laughs> of course, I was born in a northern industrial wasteland, a ghetto of depressing, narrow, cobbled streets, a cauldron of hopelessness that spawned mindless violence and forced me to give up my ballet lessons. <laughs> It was a tough area, teeming with shifty-eyed, broken-nosed people in flat caps. And some of the men were just as bad. <laughs> yes, I'll never forget Wimslow. <laughs> Wimslow. That's where the fire brigade's ex-directory. <laughs> when they have fish there, they wear a yachting cap. When I was a kid, the children there used to steal hubcaps from cars while they were moving. <laughs> Still, they do say that adversity brings people closer together. It certainly did with us. Seven of us had to share one bed. And that included the woman from next door. <laughs> As my father used to say, when you're poor, you have to make your own amusement. <laughs> he also said, suffering shared is suffering hard. So here's the man who's going to help me tonight to make you suffer, and believe me, he will. <laughs> it's an act that one day will go down, and down, and down. <laughs> Roy Castle! What about that, Les? All for me, eh? Never thank you, like thank that, you. Yeah. yeah, no, you really are astute tonight. Hey, Les, come on now, we've got to try and make all these people happy, right? Well, why? <laughs> what have they ever done for us? <laughs> You're not fooling me, yeah? You like Christmas, don't you? Come on, I saw you backstage, standing there with mistletoe in your hair as the producer's secretary walked by. Yeah, had a stupid stood there at Lent. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear what she said to me? Yeah, she said, it's the first time she's seen mistletoe on a Christmas pudding. <laughs> No, she was only joking, I think. Yeah, but you see, what annoys me, they don't make jokes like that about you, do they? Oh, well, I'm not as, as well-built as you are. <laughs> anyway, why worry about her? There's thousands of people love you. All this audience loves you. Do you love me? <laughs> Come on, shut up. Oh, dear. I tried to kiss that up, fall in. Just wear skis. <laughs> on my head. Oh, come on, it's Christmas. Now let's be happy. Let's be happy, Les. Oh, you be happy. You go through like an amiable idiot. <laughs> I'll just enjoy being miserable if you don't mind. Ah, oh, come on. I can't be happy on my own, Les. I want to be happy, but I can't be happy till I make you happy too. Life's only worth living when we are mirth giving. I'd like to give some to you. 
When skies are gray and you're feeling so blue, I'll send the sun smiling through. I want to be happy, but I can't be happy. Oh, that was, that was really average. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you win, you latter day Hermes of happiness. So I will join you in your jaunty jocundity, your exuberant euphoria. You are? <laughs> I will be cheerful. Great, great. After all, I mean, Christmas is the time for cheerfulness <clears throat> and presents and parties. Yeah, yeah, parties. I remember one very happy Christmas. The wife's mother had broken her leg. <laughs> A horse would kiss her while she was shooing it. <laughs> it fell out with the vice. <laughs> and the wife had to go and look after her. I you thought I'd gone deaf. This is, uh... <laughs> your, wife, your wife had to go away. So it's yeah. a case of when the cat's away. Well, you've met the wife, haven't you? <laughs> no, that's just a saying, that. Oh. Anyway, I, I was on my own, so I went to this fancy dress party at Frida Goodbody's. <laughs> what a woman. <laughs> Frida wore a long wig as Lady Godiva, and I said I was Sweeney Todd the Barber. <laughs> we had a few dozen drinks and we played Fireman's Knock. What's Fireman's Knock? Well, it's like Postman's Knock, only hotter. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> then, just as I sat down with Frida, I got my scissors out. Charlie Benson started playing musical bumps. Musical bumps? Yeah. It went round hitting everybody on the head with his ukulele. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Sounds like a very sophisticated soiree, that. A sort of tea dance at Toxter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't really Charlie's fault, Roy. No. You know, they kept forcing drinks on him and saying things like, Get it down, Charlie. <laughs> it'll do you good. Get it down, it'll do you good. Three hours later, outside saying, get it up, Charlie, it'll do you good. <laughs> hey, tell me. <laughs> good out of work a lot. Do you know Charlie Benson? Charlie Benson? He's the vicar, isn't he? Oh, that's very whimsical. Do you know you're a laugh an hour? <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was the vicar coming that ruined the whole party. Come off it, Les. Right. He came round with his church choir. They were carol singing. Frida Goodbody rushed out to see them, tripped over, grabbed the vicar and his trousers came off. I don't believe a word of it. It's true, he had no surplus. And then... <laughs> <laughs> then the police came and arrested Frida for disturbing the breaches of the priest. <laughs> Go on then, let's have all of them. And that's how the vicar became a minister without portfolio, I know. All those, go on, let's hear all the jokes you've got from the Christmas crackers. Let's hear them all. Can I ask you one thing, Roy? Yes. Are you in show business or just passing through? <laughs> thing I don't like is carol singers can be a nuisance. Mm. Mm. I mean, as soon as you sit down to relax for five minutes, some idiot comes along with, I wish you a Merry Christmas, I wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Easter as well. Here he is, the tinsel dipstick. <laughs> the Christmas spirit that frightens Scrooge. Look at him. No, oh, now it's Eli Woods. Eli, what are you doing here? He's singing stupid cattles. Yeah, I'm singing stupid cattles. No, I'm not. Cattles aren't stupid. Oh, it's you then. Yeah. <laughs> idea then of all the bits of cotton wool stuck all over you there? I'm a snowman. <laughs> More like a no man to me. <laughs> but wait a minute, the cotton wool's all dirty and stained. Well, there's been a bit of a, a thaw. <laughs> it's slush. I'm a slush man. 
Christmas is coming and the geese are getting fat. Please put a penny in the old man's best. If you haven't got a penny, hate me will do. If you haven't got a hate me, credit cards will do. Thank you, sir. It's for a very worthy cause. Thank you. It's for a very worthy cause. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the worthy cause? Me. <laughs> Just drop it in the collecting tin. But that is not a secretional box for taking offertories. It's a dustbin. <laughs> yeah, the producer gave me this. He said, up to, up to now, you two have been a load of rubbish. <laughs> producer? You meet him in the aquarium. <laughs> One appearance on a Royal Command show we get a list to put up with. <laughs> he got that job for five O-levels. <laughs> producer, my foot. Why, that befuddled old broadcaster. <laughs> if I remember rightly, when the BBC had money, wasn't he the man who did a version of Samson and Delilah with Johnny Munn and Nora Batty? <laughs> I thought John Inman was very, very good at Delilah. <laughs> anyway, what a, about the collection? Eli, get off. Before your knees rub together and we have a fire. <laughs> You must have made plenty of money from that space film. You did play the part of E.T., didn't you? <laughs> and to think I stuck up for you two. The producer said you hadn't as much talent as a couple of performing pigs. I said you had. Get off! Get off. Go on, get off. Leave it out. Go on, get off. All right, I can take a hint. All right, well, now we've got rid of him, uh, Mr. Universe there. What uh, were we actually talking about, Les? Have you seen those shoulders? <laughs> Not Eli. What? Go on. I've seen bigger shoulders on a sauce bottle. <laughs> I'll tell you what we were talking about, how much we hate cattle singing. That's right. Oh, That's right. sure now, good kings, wench, let's lack toast out, be dad. We got to an arm the feast of Stephen, be Jesus, me boy, oh, Hawkeye. Get off, yeah. Eli. Go on, get off. How do you know it was me? You're still carrying the dustbin. <laughs> Ta-da, then, and a Merry Christmas. Yeah. You know, Les, his father was very disappointed when Eli was born. Get away. Yeah, his father wanted a girl or a boy. <laughs> no, I did hear that when Eli was a baby, his mother said, I don't know what to make of him, and his father said, how about a rug? <laughs> I believe that uh, when he was born, he was so ugly that the doctor smacked his mother. <laughs> his father put shutters on the pram. You have to give the midwife gas in there before she delivered him. Jingle, jangle, all the way, man. What a jolly funny damn to ride in a donkey cart. Get man. I, get off! How do you know it was me? You said they'd give away that tea cosy on your head. I couldn't get a. A turban my size. Ah, belly, 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 Christmas. Who oh, are so? Belly, 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 belly. Get Eli, off. get off! Let's quit. Before he comes back, let's do a song together. Okay. It's about a Broadway star, a superstar, and it's Roxy. Oh, can't be bad. The name on everybody's lips is gonna be Roxy. The lady raking in the chips is gonna be oh, Roxy. She's gonna be a celebrity that means somebody everybody knows. Mm. They're gonna recognize her eyes, her hair, her teeth, her feet, her nose. Who's gonna keep Chicago? We know it. Combustible Roxy. What well, a place to warm your hands. You've oh, oh. never seen a bigger show. I can't wait, I can't wait. And when she does that hoochie coo, oh, she'll tear the balcony in two. Go, go, Roxy, go. Hey, Les, have you seen Roxy yet? I, I'm gonna take ugly pills. Gonna wait outside in line 
you get to see Roxy. How long you there, boy? Think of the autographs she'll sign. You're sincere. Why, good luck to you, Roxy. And she'll appear in a lavalier I'll that help. goes all the way down to her she waist. She can rely on me. <laughs> Here a ring, there a ring, everywhere a ring-a-ding, but always in the best possible taste. Nothing else, my boy. The Windy City's gonna shake from Hurricane Roxy. Mm, more kick, that old O'Leary's is cow. Oh, I'm safe there. So get inside and grab a seat Before she knocks you off your feet Here comes Roxy now Here we do go again, my friend So get inside and grab a seat before she knocks you off your feet Here comes Roxy now Roxy! Now, I'll tell you one thing they've never had on Broadway, and that's a real British pantomime, you know? They don't know what that is. I should think that colonials, that's what they are, colonials. They think Red Riding Hood was a Russian gangster. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember once I was in America, and a comic said, Ah, uh, what's this thing you have in England, uh, a pantomime? They told me... <laughs> they told me it's very big. So I said, look, I've just been in one called Humpty Dumpty. And he said, huh, what part did you play? And I said, an egg. <laughs> and the principal boy was a girl and the dame was a man. And he said, oh, sure. Ask a stupid question. You get a stupid answer, huh? <laughs> we over a stuck man for the Muppets. Well, well, of course, pantomimes get a bit strange sometimes, they're bound to. Mm. I mean, all the big stars, they all did panto, and they had to be fitted in with the plot. I remember Aladdin when Joseph Locke played the Chinese emperor <laughs> with the tax man at his side. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he did 30 minutes of Irish songs. <laughs> the Chinese emperor. Yeah. Well, what about Izzy Bond, then? In his 50s, you know. Izzy he was Bond. A, yeah, he was about 14 stone. He was playing buttons. <laughs> The There's page. no flies on him. <laughs> For 14 stone, playing buttons, the page boy, and singing my Yiddish mama to Cinderella. That's true, then, not oh, no. You know, I can remember <laughs> Wilson, Keppel and Betty doing their sand dance in the middle of Sherwood Forest. Yeah. <laughs> they were very spruce. <laughs> what about Frank Randall, then? Very good, very good. Very good, my trouble, that'll do me good, eh? <laughs> I'll fettle thee. Uh, hey. I'll be glad when I've had enough of this. Uh, uh, good, uh, <laughs> get up them stairs, you naughty thing. Uh, yeah. Do you know, he had a troupe of Arab acrobats, don't you? He bebs yeah, in the wood, true. and at the end, he insisted that they all joined in the finale singing Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> I once saw Cinderella at the Hyden Skimworks, Wigan. <laughs> I played them. <laughs> Alan Hard up knocked on the palace door and the whole lot collapsed. One of the ugly sisters said, well, it may not be the star, but he brought the house down. Yeah. I played in Cinderella when I first started, and believe it or not, I was a footman, and I had to put the slipper on. Oh, come on. That was nearly a joke. <laughs> oh, I hadn't seen that myself there. That was, uh, yeah. <laughs> No, it's true. Cinderella couldn't appear on one night, so the understudy had to go on, and she was much bigger than the real Cinderella, and she couldn't get the shoe on. So what did you do? Well, I just shoved and pushed and forced her foot into it, that's all. She stood up, tears rolling down her face, hobbled towards Prince Charming and fell flat on her nose. <laughs> we had a strange one in Aladdin, you know. That was plenty, a pure, normally is a pure, yeah. That was at the liver clinic crew. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no. What was that again? Never played it. Good film with Matt's crew. <laughs> Never played it. I was there with Johnson's jumping Catholic geese. <laughs> Marvellous act. Anyway, when Aladdin rubbed the lamp, there was a flash and the genie used to shoot up through the trap door. Yes. Well, he rubbed the lamp and the genie shot up the trap door didn't close. <laughs> so we went straight down again. <laughs> he rubbed it again and the same thing happened. The genie appeared and disappeared. And I couldn't help thinking to myself, even for a genie, life's full of ups and downs. <laughs> Well, it's not just what happens at the theatres either, it's the digs, isn't it? I was, I was in a, a pantomime at Rotherham, and... Uh, <laughs> no, no, beautiful. There were that many pantomimes around. There was, uh, there was Attercliffe, and then there was a couple around Sheffield, and then there's always uh, Leeds, Wakefield, and, uh, and so you don't know who's in the digs. It doesn't have to be your own pantomime. And I was downstairs in this place I was paying about two pounds for. That's for the week. And, uh, that was last Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there was a series of thuds. Every now and again, there was a series of thuds coming from upstairs. Thum, thum, thud, thud, thud. Like that, you see. Sometimes it was seven, sometimes it would be eight, sometimes six. It was never exactly the same. But it, it was like about every 10, 20 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what is it? It's not nobody practicing the drums. The rabbit with a club foot. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the idea is like a spider taking its boots off her. There was none of that. And it wasn't until the Thursday that the landlady was in my room at the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she brought the breakfast in, you know, oh, that yeah. egg. Anyway, she was in at the time. And I said, what's that thumping that goes on upstairs? <clears throat> She said, I'll tell you why. She says, we've got Burton Lester's midgets upstairs, and when they go to the lavatory, they can't reach the chain, and they have to jump for it. <laughs> really? True story, yeah. True story. You know, all right, we're gagging about things. Can I tell you about a sad story? Yeah. I haven't got many fans, but I had one. A great guy who had a pub in Cornwall. It's called Twiggy's Chess, because the beer was flat warm. <laughs> I was playing Glasgow. Yes. He came to see me. He had a few drinks on the way. And he found himself near the railway station in Glasgow. And he staggered along and he, he tripped and sprawled his length over an inert sleeper. <laughs> and his head fell on the rail, the main rail. <laughs> and just then an express from Aberdeen came through carrying a cargo of conduit to Dorking. No, it was unusual, it normally went be tube. <laughs> Can you believe this story? I'm sorry to sort of interpolate with a little hint of tragedy here. It severed his head. Fortunately, a Latvian emigrant in the guard's van, who was a tree surgeon in Maidenhead, saw this and he picked the whole head and everything on torso and put it together and marched the victim briskly to the infirmary. <laughs> <laughs> the doctors mulled all night on what to do. And they discovered that it was too late. It was and it looked as though it was all over. Just then, a young nurse from Ghana <laughs> came across and she said that in the vivisection department there was a sheep's head. <laughs> to save him, and I, I applaud the medical profession for this. They put the sheep's head <laughs> on his body and he sewed it up and he lived <laughs> and he used to sit in bed with his grass sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> but at least he was alive <laughs> of course the sheep's head was smart because he was a big lad to balance it they, they gave him two brass earrings <laughs> and a monocle and a top hat people being people laughed at him Oh, yes. <laughs> to gain his confidence, he used to ride on a tandem in Bermuda shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Round the grounds of the hospital, eventually his wife came and she said, it's time to go home. And he looked at his sheep's head and his brass earrings and his monocle. He said, have you told them in the pub what's happened? She said, yes. 
And they're just delighted to have you home. It was very well liked in Coma. <laughs> this is this is Peter for you. <laughs> the pub is bedecked, festooned with buntings and flags to herald his appearance. A tear came down his fur. <laughs> He walked in the pub, Roy. Yes. And they all started laughing. <laughs> so he did the only thing he could do. He barred them. <laughs> you know, before you mentioned babies in the wood, yeah. there's a man not sitting very far from us, like a captured pike in that aquarium. <laughs> Who once produced this pantomime? All the cast went down with flu. It's probably true this. The rest of us did the show. It wasn't really babies in the wood, it was more like babies in a bush. <laughs> There's one scene when on came Robin Hood and his merry man. <laughs> <laughs> and as the sheriff's guards were off ill, he had to say lines like, Be careful! The sheriff's guards are hiding behind the trees. Trees? <laughs> there wasn't enough foliage to add an apprentice flasher. But I felt sorry for the principal boy because he was also playing the principal girl. So he had to marry himself. <laughs> what a holy moon that must have been. <laughs> well, I heard about a company in a small town who they had to bring in more customers, so they put on two different pantomimes each week. Oh, you're joking. No, that's true. From Monday to Wednesday, they'd perform one pantomime. Then from Thursday to Saturday, they'd perform another one. While at the same time, they were rehearsing two pantomimes for the following week. That'd be very confusing if you've had a skinful. <laughs> you can imagine the actors having had a, a few too many at a Christmas party and having to go on that night in Dick Whittington. Oh. It may be only ten more miles to London, puss, but I'm so tired. <laughs> Meow! <laughs> Meow! <laughs> and I'm afraid we're lost. Which road should we take, puss? Ah, someone approaches. Yes, let us ask this friendly looking villager. Excuse me, sir. Hello, Dandini. I am Prince Charming. <laughs> no, you're not, you fool. Pardon? Cinderella's next week. Oh. I'm afraid we are lost, kind sir. Can you help us? And who's been eating my porridge? <laughs> Look, I'm Dick Whittington, and I'm lost. And you're not the only one. <laughs> Alas, the humble villager cannot help us. Ah, someone else approaches. Let us ask this young maiden. Hello, young maiden. Hello. Have you seen my son, Jack? He's gone to sell the cow. <laughs> what cow? <laughs> There's no cow in this. It's a cat. Oh. Have you seen my son, Jack? He's gone to sell the cat. <laughs> Jack and the Beanstalk is tomorrow. I'm Dick Whittington. Oh. Well, in that case, I'm lost. That makes three of us. <laughs> oh, whose idea was it to have all those Christmas drinks anyway? I'll give you one guess. <laughs> And daddy. <laughs> I'm with old Swanky. Has anyone seen my son Wishy Washy? Wishy Washy! Your tea's ready. <laughs> Go 
Coming at you, T, and Grandad will roll his cap for you. <laughs> Look, do you mind? Ooh. Wishy washy is a naughty boy. Do you know this morning you put a frog down me tights? Ooh, I was hopping mad. <laughs> so was the frog. Hold it! Hold it! Why, who's got it? <laughs> oh, is that you, wishy-washy? I am Dick Whittington. I am confused. It, it must be the cat. <laughs> This is ridiculous. I'm looking for London, he's looking for Goldilocks, and she's looking for a cow. You should remember where you're popping. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the audience. They're not going to like this. Don't worry about the audience. We outnumber them anyway. <laughs> Just against them. Anyway, throw my bag of nuts. I'm going to the finale. Cortisol. <laughs> OK, OK, we'll sing the finale chorus. At least we can't ruin that. After three. One, two, three. Have we been very coming for again? No, 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 Oh, great. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. I, uh, I'm sure that you really enjoyed that. I also feel that we have some music lovers amongst us here tonight. Is that true? Are you a music lover, sir? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, would you like to elaborate? I wouldn't. No. That's fair enough. Where are you from? Ashton. Ashton. Very nice. Yeah. That's the way they speak in Ashton, is it? Of course, I, yeah. Must be. Right, right, that's not bad. And uh, what about you? Where are you from? Oh, Blakely. Blakely. Blakely, where's Blakely? Manchester. Right, right, so we got two from Manchester. Anybody that's not from Manchester here? Well, hang on, hang on, we got a chap here who's not from Manchester. Where are you from? Northwich. Northwich. Cheshire, Northwich. Great, and that's how you speak. There's nobody here from Birmingham, is there? Let's see if we can get to you. Hang on. <laughs> Just uh, say something in Brummy. What do you want me to say, mate? <laughs> no, that's not bad. Are you an actress? <laughs> no, I'll tell you why. Because I was at Cannon Hill Park once. You know Cannon Hill Park? Give him my regards. <laughs> so, no, it's, uh, it's a place where they have a, a tulip festival. An open air affair. You know that one, don't you? And it's the first time that I ever got introduced to accents. I went out there and I... Uh, I was just about to say good afternoon, and somebody shouted out, Why don't you play your trumpet? <laughs> That's the way they speak, isn't it? Why don't you play your trumpet? I said, you what? I said, come on, play your trumpet. Play your trumpet for us. For us? There was only two of them there. You know? <laughs> and one of them was a daffodil. I said, what do you want the trumpet for already? He said, well, it's the Tulip Festival. Yes, true. It's <laughs> no, it's it's a tulip festival, great. Why don't you play your trumpet? And then the next thing, you have to go to Newcastle. Then they say, well, why don't you play your trumpet? <laughs> oh, where are you? Get your trumpet out and get it played. Yeah. And then you go up to Scotland. They say, if you play that trumpet, I'll smash your face in. <laughs> One, two, three.
in, Leslie and I, who are known to you as the Sophisticates, are delighted to welcome a third chanteur, Mr. Roy Castle. <laughs> With a song in our Thank you and good evening. Tonight, Roy and I would like to show you how, musically speaking, we stick to delightful death there like a dark appendage. Which is just Leslie's witty and whimsical fashion of introducing our song, Me and they shadows. <laughs> me. Who? You? Yes, me. And my shadows. Where your shadows? Both of us walking down the avenue. Just me. Who, you? Yes, me. And my shadows. Where's still your shadows? There's no one listening to our tale of woe. And when it's twelve o'clock, the witching hour of midnight, we climb the stairs. Tired and weary up the stairs. We never knock. Or even ring the bell. Because you was in there. Just three of us, we. Who, you? Yes, we. And us. Shadow, not a soul to tell our drummers. Do, 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 do. And when it's twelve o'clock, bong, 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 <laughs> bong. We climb the stair. We climb the stairway to paradise. <laughs> we never knock. Ratatata, ratatata, cause nobody's there. The winds of March that make my heart a dancer. The telephone that rings, but who is to answer? Oh, how the girls are ruling. <laughs> These foolish things remind me of the young. Shut, 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 oh, no, 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 Now it's time for me to sing my ballad. It's a beautiful song, this. And uh, Excuse on occasion... Excuse me! Yeah, yeah, what is it? We've had a union meeting and we have decided, within yeah. the government guidelines, <laughs> to demand 5% of the singing. That's right, brother. I'm not your brother. Well, you're not his sister. <laughs> OK. All right, all right, then. Have you got a song in mind? Yes. I'd like to sing on the first day of Christmas. I thought you wanted to sing now. Well, <laughs> that's the name of the song, you fool. Yeah. yeah, I knew that. I knew that. All right, let's, uh, I'll give you a note then, shall we? Ah, uh, after three, one, two, three. On, on the, the first day of Christmas, Christmas my true love said to me. me. Hold it, hold it, hold it. She said the party. Hold it. He was away then, wasn't he, Noel Gordon? Ah. <laughs> I was away then, wasn't yeah, I? Yeah. yeah, Not far enough, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't understand why everyone sings Christmas songs at Christmas. <laughs> why can't we be different? All right, all right. If you want to be different, make it Easter. 
Right, though. Okay. Mm, after mm. three, on the first day, day of, of Easter, Easter, my true love, love said to me, a partridge in a pear tree. Wait on the moment. second day of Christmas, my moment. true love said to me, I'm not oh. I said. I was away again. I'm I'm away. I, yeah, I was yeah, away. Yeah. I was God, away what's again. the matter this time, then? Who'd send anybody a partridge in a pear tree Easter? <laughs> Who the heck sends one at Christmas? <laughs> my friend George sent me one. Frozen chicken last November, but it wasn't in a tree. Look, it's a traditional song, okay? Yeah. I yeah. always get a pair of socks. <laughs> I'm not interested. People have sung this for years and never questioned it. My true love sent to me a partridge in a pear tree. How do you wrap them up? <laughs> wrap what up? A partridge in a pear tree! Unless you put the partridge in the box with holes in it. Yeah, but how can you wrap up a tree? You send them an acorn and you tell them to grow their own, all right? Now, well, let's carry on, shall we? Two. I'll tell you what's next. What's next? Two turtle doves. Two turtle doves? Can we put them in the same box as the partridge? <laughs> yes, but you'd have to make some more holes. Hey, they might breed. I wonder if they call it a church ridge. <laughs> but do you want to sing or not? Of course we do, Noel. Right. It's a partridge in a pear tree. Two turtle doves, and don't go away because we've got three French hens coming up in a minute. They'll have to go in a separate box. <laughs> Why? Because they followed us. <laughs> and the fellow who wrote this song... Yeah, what about him? He liked his birds. <laughs> Listen, it's a traditional song about a man giving gifts to his true love. Yeah, but the way things are going, he's not going to see her for feathers. <laughs> if it's Easter, he should be given an Easter eggs. All right, anything, anything. We'll make it an Easter egg in a fancy box, then. Will it have holes in? <laughs> Will what have holes in? The box! No! But somebody's head might have if he doesn't shut up! Right, after three... One, two, three. On the first day of Easter, my true love said to me, an Easter egg in a fancy box. Without holes in, without holes in. Oh, shut up. Now, what can we send someone on the second day of Easter? They sent me a tortoise. But I didn't like it, the crust was too hard. <laughs> rum, rum. All right. We'll make it two hot cross buns then. On, On the, the second, second day of Easter, my true love said to me, two hot cross buns and an Easter egg in a fancy box without all Shut up! <laughs> Look, this is it now, once and for all. Are you ready? We won't do Christmas and we won't do Easter. We'll make it August Bank Holiday Monday. Right. One, two, three. On August Bank Holiday Monday, my true love said to me, nothing. Why not, Noel? Because all the shops are shut. Ta da I'm in no mood to sing that beautiful song. How can you sing a beautiful song after all that? Brian, you reckon we can try and recapture that lovely feeling? Looks like it's you and me against the world, sunshine. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and me against the world When all the others turn their backs and walk away You can count on me to stay Remember when the circus came to town And you were frightened by the clown wasn't it nice to be around Someone that you knew Someone who was big and strong And looking out for you And me against the world Sometimes it feels like you and me 
against the world And for all the times we've cried I always felt the odds were on our side And when one of us is gone And one is left alone to carry on Well then remembering will have to do Our memories alone will get us through Think about the days of me and you Of you and me I was going to sing you the hit song from a new musical based on the Elephant Man called Put on a Happy Face, but I won't. <laughs> Christmas is a time when fortunate people are surrounded by family, but just what are families? The blood that flows in the veins of every Briton is the plasma of history. Our heritage was forged in the crucible of the great warrior tribes, the Normans, the Saxons, the Goths, the Jutes, the Angles. They all temper the blade of our natural aggression, where we are an aggressive people. I myself come from a military family. You've heard of the thin red line, we were the fat yellow blob. <laughs> During the First World War, my grandfather had somebody white feathers sent to me and played Old Empire for four years as Mother Goose. <laughs> my father was at Dunkirk when the first shot was fired. It was under our bed at all, but the second one went off. <laughs> I did be stiff at the army, I was in the Queen's Bay Second Dragoon Guards. I could never get up in the morning. I was court martialed and stayed in bed. The commanding officer said, Dawson, don't you ever hear the bugle? I said, no, sir, they play when I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Dawson dynasty started with Elric the Peculiar. He was the first Viking to get mugged in Gateshead. <laughs> he was only a little fellow. When he pulled his socks, he'd be blindfolded himself. <laughs> But in those days, to prove their manhood, young Vikings had to wrestle with a wild bear and then make love to an innocent maiden. Elric was a bit deaf. <laughs> and when they dragged him out of the forest with a broken leg and ripped to bits, he said, where's the maiden I have to wrestle? Elric married a girl who everybody thought was a Viking because she had a face like a Norse. <laughs> <laughs> the one man we're all really proud of in the Dawson family was Emmerdale Dawson. <laughs> he was with General Custer in a pitched battle with the Apache. He had 300 hours on his back. He had to live for 10 years to tell the tale and died a woodworm. <laughs> There's a great thing about the British people. We always have a great thing about animals. I mean, my first pet was a cat that was born in a bowler hat and it grew up around children. <laughs> oh, it was a clean cat. <laughs> if it did anything in the garden, it used to fill the hole in straight away with a shovel. The love between 
The average Englishman and animals is legendary. I remember one Christmas meeting a lonely man, but he did have a dog, and it was through Callum that I realised that a dog is a man's best friend. It was some years ago that I was on a holiday from my job as a bouncer in a convent. <laughs> it was my job to stop the nuns kicking the habit. <laughs> it was in the quaint fishing village of Slush Cove, which crouches under the yawning cliffs of South Yorkshire, where only the boom of the full flecked ocean and the plaintive mew of the wheeling gulls disturbed the pregnant silence. <laughs> as I trudged on the white shingle, I paused to watch a midget wheeling a harpoon as he savagely attacked a shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> when suddenly I heard a scream of distress above the roar of the crashing breakers. At first I thought it was somebody playing an old Kate Bush record. <laughs> And then I realised it was a drowning woman. I knew it was a woman, her mouth was open. <laughs> I started to unwind the hundred foot of rope I always carry around my waist for an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> to my astonishment, I saw a bedraggled dog with its nose askew and a cauliflower in it. It was obviously a boxer. <laughs> I saw this hound dive from a protruding crag into the raging foam. He did a two and a half somersaults with pike. <laughs> and I mentally awarded him nine points. <laughs> His paws were not quite together when he hit the water. <laughs> but then I saw the dog's owner on the cliff top shouting encouragement to his faithful quadruped. Good boy, Rover, keep going, fetch you back, good dog. The courageous canine seized the woman's dress in his aging molars and towed her to land with a powerful backstroke. I arrived in time to help the dog's proud master carried the victim to the top of the crag. In a moment, her eyes opened and I cried up joyously, she's all right, the dog has saved her. What a clever, brave dog he is. The man said, yes, he's a good dog. But it's all due to training, constant training. Whereupon he lifted the woman, threw her back in the water and said, fetch her over. <laughs> time in Laugh Along to Sing Along when you have the thrill of singing one of the old favourites whilst I accompany you on the piano forte. <laughs> but as an extra special treat, Mr Roy Castle will join in playing the flugelhorn. Now flugel? I know this. Yes, a flugel, isn't it? No. No, it's an alpine horn. That's right, yeah. Perhaps he's got the flugel. It's just... <laughs> no, that you play this in the Swiss Alps. It's a very good place to hear it from. Is it really? Yeah, as long as you're still here. I chose Switzerland, you know. Thought the world of me, they called me the idle swine. It's ten feet long, you know, this alpine horn. Is it really? Yeah. Mm. I was told to keep away from music. I've heard you sing, it was good advice. <laughs> now, we're going to sing that well-time honoured carol, I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. OK, mate? Yeah. Well, I'll just tune up a bit. <laughs> You can have a lot of fun with this on the motorways when it's foggy. <laughs> you flip that one in, haven't you? <laughs> it's I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. Ready? Yeah.
That was Laugh Along at Christmas with Les Dawson, Roy Castle, Eli Woods, Daphne Oxenford and the Brian Fitzgerald Orchestra. The script was written by James Casey and Ron McDonnell with additional material by Mike Craig and Laurie Kingsley. The show was devised and produced by James Casey.